uh, introduce yourself a little bit and then, um, and then we'll let you get started. Sure, sure. Thank you so much, Dan. Um, uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me here and allowing me to present our research uh, product to this great uh, research group. Actually, I'm enjoying these uh, Todd talks, weekly talks. I learn a lot these days, so I like this community. And then maybe this is a great uh, outlet to present our research outcome uh, uh, of our research. So um, I'm an associate professor in the civil engineering department, and uh, I'm closely collaborating with uh, Jaegang King, uh, professor of statistics department. And then we are actually recently forming a team to tackle some uh, missing data problem in engineering and science domain. So it is supported by NSF uh, CSSI. And then uh, we have some uh, good uh, results so far, and then especially some program. So I, we want to share this outcome to the research group here. All right, so let me start my, uh, okay. So is it okay? Do you, do you see my uh, presentation documents well? We see your title slide. Okay, great, okay. So yeah, today I wanna to talk about uh, parallel uh, fractional hot tech imputation for a large or big missing data curing for improving machine learning and uh, statistical inference. So actually it's incomplete data, as you all know, everywhere. Not, it's not exception in engineering domain. So for example, as shown here, we have Engineer, infrastructure engineers have a lot of uh, data set from sensor, uh, from bridges and transportation, or community level uh, databases. They always have some missing data issue due to some, uh, you know, data inconsistency or hardware hardware failure or human error, so on and so forth. It's everywhere, and it's not. It's also found in the broad science domain, such as uh, phenotype database. Uh, from Dr. Lawrence group. So as you shown here, uh, this very important phenotype data set has intrinsic missing data. Sometimes it's very huge, up to 26% as shown here. Uh, we are interested as an engineer and researcher. So we want to use machine learning or a statistical prediction to use the uh, given data set. But uh, to deal with the missing data, we sometimes fill in with, with various methods, but depending on which method you use to cure the data, the subsequent machine learning can be very much different, perform very much differently. So this is an example. So we cure the phenotype data set uh, with missing rate 30%. Uh, we cure it with a naive method. Naive method here, we cure that with simple observed mean, just like uh, widely used in the machine learning community. And in comparison, we cure that same data with FHDI, so fractional hot tech imputation of our group. And then we perform machine learning and statistical prediction. As shown here, the artificial neural network or extreme randomized tree or the generalized additive model and some, depending on the uh, data set, the uh, root mean square is difference is very huge. It's very important point for the researchers because we want to cure first and then to do some statistical inference or machine learning. So this difference is very uh, important uh, aspect about the importance of the uh, missing data curing. So I, happened to have a chance to talk with uh, Google's statistic director. And then he said, uh, they, even they doing the data curing using this naive method, say uh, using mean or simply delete because they have a large, large data or big data. It is actually very popular in machine learning community, but uh, it can cause some statistical problems. So loss of some information or unexpected bias can happen and then Subsequent machine learning or statistical prediction may have a lower accuracy. What about popular imputation methods? So there are many great methods in statistical domain, such as multiple imputation. 
So one of the most popular method. Bottom line here is that uh, given the missing data, then they generate M imputed data set and then perform the desired statistical analysis and then gather using so-called uh, Rubin's formula. But um, in the statistics domain, they found that this multiple imputation method requires so-called congeniality condition or self-efficient condition. So um, it's very hard to satisfy that uh, by the engineering researchers. So the, there exist challenges of existing imputation method. So they often require expert level of statistical or distribution, distributional assumption. These are very much obstacle for general researchers in engineering and science. And even with a good expertise, there exist computational limits, such as the too much computing time or too much uh, memory, so on and so forth. So it is very hard to use the existing imputation method to large or big incomplete data in broad engineering science domain. So uh, our choice for big data imputation was the fractional hot tech imputation. The meaning of hot tech means that uh, we don't use the artificial distribution or artificial data set. We just use the observed data set. That's why we call that hot tech. And then basically we do not require a model or distribution assumption. So it seeks to uh, leverage or preserve the joint probability of data available. So uh, fractional imputation is combined to make a hot tech, fractional hot tech imputation. It has some history here as shown here. So key bottom line is that just like MI, we impute a single value with M imputed values for a single missing value. Each imputed value have so-called fractional weight. It's kind of importance factor to cure the missing value. And then we can use replication method to calculate the variance uncertainty behind that. Uh, the bottom line was two types. So one is the fully efficient, uh, fully efficient fractional, fractional imputation, we call FAFI. And another one is fractional hot tech imputation, so we call FHDI. The difference is that FAFI use all observed value or all possible donors, whereas FHDI use systematic random sampling from that possible donors. So require only a few set of donors. So FHDI, in some sense, is kind of a subset of FEFI. And we, our group recently developed the open source R package named FHDI. It's already available in CRAN, so you can freely download it. And then there is some reference paper. So I want to briefly talk about the basic setup for this FHDI. So we have population index U, and then we have sample A. And then the population data, sample data matrix Y can be large, say uh, N times P. It can be really large matrix. The bottom line here is that we want to categorize the continuous variable to discrete data set. And we, we use the same pattern of the observance or missingness of continuous data set to the discrete data set. And then we adopt the um, um, missing at random uh, assumption, a very uh, popular assumption in the imputation. And then we adopt so-called cell mean model, which means that each box or each cell, we have local mean and local standard, uh, local variance, local variance. So um, entire data set is categorized and that each category, categorized cell has its own mean and uh, variance. This is the key uh, bottom line of this. So to understand that concept, it's good to have simple example, simple example. So we generated synthetic data with four variable, a very small data set, and we randomly delete of them. 
So this is, you can download this package, the existing R, and we have four variable and each variable randomly missing this like this. And then uh, the existing data set has missingnesses. Here NA means that the missing, missing value of each column. And as I said before, this continuous data set is categorized into imputation cell. So here we showed three category, one, two, three, and then zero means that uh, missing. So each value, depending on its quantile, uh, is categorized into imputation cell. And we can easily calculate the pattern of that. So the left side shows the observed pattern, whereas the right side is a missing pattern. So by this way, we can easily uh, identify how the missingness exists in the, the existing data set. And for example, the right top, we have uh, all three variables are missing, but the last variable is category two. To cure this data, there are possible donors. For example, third row or sixth row or eighth row, uh, can be possible donor because of the observed part of variable four, samely have two. So uh, those are possible donors. And then the bottom line of this FHDI is that to measure the global, global mean. This is a global estimate and population estimate. And then we adopt so-called uh, fixed finite mixture model using the joint cell probability but we don't know exact joint cell probability because there is a missing hole, just like a puzzle without some, uh, some cell there. So we don't know exact joint cell probability. So that's why we adopt the expectation maximization algorithm iteratively to get the converged uh, joint cell probability. So this is on that example, the following that example. For each missing pattern, such as 1111 shown here, or 1123, each missing pattern, after EM algorithm, we can get the joint cell probability that can maximize the expectation of the observance. So um, this is done by FHDI. And then using that uh, joint cell probability, we can now impute. So as I said before, FEFI impute everything using the all possible donors. Whereas FHDI systematically select M possible donors, M possible donors. So that, that's how we can, get, we can estimate this global mean this way. So returning to that example, TOI example. So to cure the first uh, missing value in the Y3, we have two donors. But the third uh, missing pattern, we have six donors as shown here from row eight to row 13. This is a FAFI situation. But if we use FHDI using five possible donors, then we restrict our possible donor to five. Compared to previous one, as shown here, we have six possible donor, but now we restrict its possible donor to five. So this way we can control the number of donors, which is very important uh, aspect for large data application. And then we perform the so-called Jack Knife method to calculate the uncertainty behind this uh, FFE or FHDI estimator. So by this way, uh, we can uh, calculate the standard error systematically comparing to Knife method we expect that FEFI and FHDI is smaller standard error compared to naive method. But as you see here, FHDI has a little bit larger standard error compared to FEFI because it has random sampling. The, we have a random donor selection. That's why we have a little bit more uncertainty compared to FEFI. But obviously it's better than the naive method and we have a good asymptotic property. So that means uh, after some algebraic uh, uh, mathematical proof, 
that is available here in the reference, we have that uh, FHDI can nicely uh, replace the FAFI as shown here. So with a large data set, we can have asymptotically a good property of FHDI. And in terms of variance also has, uh, it also has good asymptotic property to approach the FAFI. But this additional variance of FHDI comes from the random donor selection part. So uh, thus for large big data, FHDI can asymptotically replace the FAFI. So FHDI has a strong computational efficiency compared to FFE because it has small number of donors, not the all possible donors. These are the strong uh, starting point for the uh, parallel FHDI for large or big data curing. This is another uh, practical data uh, validation of FHDI. So close to one means that good uh, imputation Okay, so I want to talk about then what's the motivation behind parallel FHDI. So we already uh, make available the serial version R package FHDI, but it has some limitation because it, it works very well for small size data, but it, it requires a lot of time or memory requirement for middle, middle size or large data set. So, and if there is too many variables, so it's not applicable. So there is strong need for general purpose uh, assumption-free big data imputation tool. So as I showed before, uh, there is a positive impact of FHDI on machine learning and statistical prediction that will be inherited by this parallel FHDI. So to begin with, I want to talk about the types of uh, data set. So we call in this study the large, big N data, which has a lot of instances or a lot of rows, more than say millions. And but whereas the variables is not that big, say uh, dozens or hundreds. But we do also see some situation have big P data set. Big P data has so 10,000 or millions variable, whereas the instances is small. We call that big P data. So these two extremes are already tackled by uh, version one. It's already available, it's available. But our ongoing research is working on this ultra, we call that ultra data, which is concurrently big N and big P. So both N and both P can be millions, millions variable or millions instances. So it, it follows the typical procedure of FHDI. So first is a parallel cell construction, as I mentioned before, uh, categorization, and then we adopt so-called sure independent screening for the donor selection and do K nearest neighbor searching to, fast, uh, to do fast uh, donor search of the vast domain. And then we perform parallel cell probability estimation which is the EM algorithm, and then parallel imputation and parallel variance estimation. Details are too much computational, so I put in the supplement uh, material, and also more details in the, available in my paper. But I want to talk about bottom line of this uh, parallel FHDI, is that we cannot use only embarrassingly parallelized observable algorithm, so, such as divide and conquer because there is uh, some tasks such as EM algorithm, we cannot break down that. So uh, we have to do so-called uh, implicit in internally parallelizable uh, algorithm inside, but there are some such as uh, jackknife method, we can break down easily. So that we need to use a divide and conquer algorithm. So we combine that depending on the algorithm and task. And another aspect I want to share is that sometimes uniform job distribution works well, but sometimes it's not because of the huge job task imbalance. So uh, we adopt so-called cyclic job distribution for some tasks. So we combine these two methods. So uniform uh, parallel task and cyclic job parallel task. And we derive some um, 
total time cost model of the, this parallel task. And we show that it's some, it has some scalability, good scalability equations. So uh, this is an example of scalability result of a big N data set, which has millions of instances, millions of instances for small uh, variables. Uh, depend, regardless of the missing rate, we can see the final uh, scalability is very good, linear scalability. This is a big N data, which is uh, a lot of instances, a lot of rows. But uh, there is just another challenge to uh, the big P data, which is a high dimensional data. Here, the extremely high dimensional data. So for example, if we have a missing pattern, if we have a missing pattern, but what if we have variable larger than 10,000 or 100,000 or even 1 million variables? Then we cannot find enough donors quickly. It's very hard to uh, quick find the donors quickly because there are infinitely many possible meeting pattern. Each variable, for example, had three category, then three to the power of one million. We cannot handle that situation. So um, searching the vast space is not possible computationally. So essentially, we need to use a variable reduction scheme. There are many methods. There are very powerful methods in the uh, statistics. But the uh, first step, we use the so-called sure independent screening. It's very simple and very efficient to uh, implement. Basic idea is that sure SIS is that we assume the true model, M star, but after some uh, mathematical proof, our uh, reduced model, reduced variable based model, can include that true model asymptotically. So this is a very attractive property we, we want to rely on. Because we have big data, large data, and approach is very uh, large. See, so we want to consider only selected variable based on this SIS. So there are possible in many ways. For example, suppose we have Y3 has missing value. So, but from correlation study, we can find that uh, the most correlated variable, uh, Y10, or variable 12, variable 100, so on and so forth. And then the variable four can have a different correlation set. So uh, depending on correlation score, Y9, so on and so forth. So we can think of to cure this missing pattern, we can think of an intersection of, for example, intersection, that means uh, Y12 is most important at the same time, and Y100, Y100. And union, we can think about just simply union of this important variable or just global ranking. So that is sorted by global correlation score. So PFHDI search this um, based on this intersection, union, or global ranking. We, we reduce the variable spaces like this. And one thing I want to mention is that uh, we have to slightly change the EM algorithm because we change the variable domain to the reduced variable. So we change the modified EM algorithm a little bit based on that. Uh, selected variable space. And this is an algorithm very similar to the serial version. And then importantly, after we select out the variable, a few variable, and then we perform so-called K nearest neighbors searching in a Euclidean space. So um, to select the donors, very close donors, we have to still deal with a lot of instances. So we rely on this KNN searching. So as shown here, if we do both SIS and KNN, then big P, in this big P data had 10,000 variable, extremely high variable. It, it shows good scalability. So uh, we already make available this uh, synthetic and practical data set, it includes some um, big N, such as uh, millions instances, or big P, so 10,000 variable, or very much a practical data set also. And even it has some um, uh, categorical data. 
or hybrid data. Hybrid data means that some variables are continuous and some variables are categorical. So these, vari these data set are already available in our group's website. And then you can download it and you can freely use it. And then we also share, want to share, actually it's already available, our source code. So you can freely download and we tested that on our ISU uh, HPC environment and also NSF uh, cloud computing facilities such as NSF Exit is successfully running there. So you can use uh, those environment to perform this parallel FHDI. So in summary, so uh, PFHDI inherits all the strengths of general purpose OSM free serial version FHDI. And then PFHDI shows a fav favorable linear speed up when it is applied to big data set up to say, say uh, big N data, millions of instances. We tested so far two or three million so far, it works well. And then we embed the SIS and KNN for big P data set. So it works well for up to 10,000 variables. We are working on uh, 100,000 or million variable. We are working on it. And the early version, so PFHDI is available already. So you can uh, freely use that. We hope that this will help the researchers in the broad engineering and science who, so that they can cure their own uh, data set without any uh, difficulties, or without any expertise. Of course, there is a more advanced imputation method, which will be the open topic for our uh, extension. So currently we are working on the ultra data set. That is uh, millions of instances and millions of variables concurrently. So uh, we need so-called more systematic variable reduction for donor selection, such as graphical lasso or other method. We are working on it. And also we are interested in the high dimensional categorical data. Categorical data here means that it is not continuous. So uh, we have to use another theory to do that. So we are developing that topics. So I include some references and then a link so that you can freely download. So um, for any uh, question or any need for the program, data set or any discussion, please, uh, please feel free to contact me. And then I, I'd like to acknowledge the generous support from NSF. All right, so thank you so much. Thank you, very nice talk. Um, let's open it up for questions. Um, Um, uh, can I ask a question? Uh, this is Zheng Yuanzhu. Hi, Ju. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hi. Cool. How mm -hmm. are you doing? <laughs> good, good. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice work. And, uh, and, and just the uh, question about the, the number of variables. It seems that, uh, so you basically do the um, selection using the first change the continuous variable to categorical, right? And yeah, then, at the very beginning. Correct. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And, and then basically everything after that is basically categorical. You use that to de decide what is uh, the neighbor, then select a random set from that, right? Yes, yes. But uh, it seems that uh, even if you, uh, you have a thousand variable and you have three categories, the, that uh, the possible missing pattern already kind of exponential, right? It's pretty large. How do you deal with that? You're right, you're right. So um, if we have very small size data, say uh, 10 variable or 100 variable, is, it is not that big uh, headache. But uh, if we have more than 100 or 1,000 variables, as you said, the, it will increase exponentially. So um, that's why we suggest this uh, SIS and our K nearest neighbor searching in nuclear sense. So, uh, so far, it, it works uh, well, because um, although maximum possible uh, patterns are in nearly infinite, but uh, given the observed data set, we don't have that much uh, infinite data uh, possible patterns. That, that would be one reason we can tackle this one. And another reason is that um, we rely on that uh, SIS. So we restrict the most related variable or most correlated variable. 
So even though we have 1,000 variable, we select out, for example, five most important variable for each missing cell. So uh, that's how we can overcome that kind of high dimensional uh, uh, exponentially large cases. So uh, let me see if I understand it correctly. So for each missing cell, you can run this SIS to find maybe five. Uh, that, yeah, exactly. This is the slide I was looking for. So for each of the, uh, these question marks, you have uh, uh, five of the variables that's the most related. That's correct. If the pattern involves like three missing cells, you're just correct. using some of this union or some global ranking to create uh, the, the variables you want to select a neighbor, uh, define correct. a neighbor. I, I okay. Yeah, Still, yeah. <laughs> that's a, basically you have to do this for each different uh, missing pattern. That's a lot of computation. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's the yeah key point of this PFHDI. The idea is simple: is the computation is very expensive. So you're right. Yeah. Great. So, thanks mm -hmm. a lot. That's that's a that's a great uh, work. Yeah, great. Thanks so much. Yeah. So can you can you clarify? Does the SIS happen after categorization or before categorization? Yeah. Thank you so much for that point. So this is after categorization. So. My mistake here, this Y is category number, not the original number. These are after categorization. But uh, searching the correlation and the, these correlation scores are done on the original data. Yeah, that's okay, that's, yeah. that's what I was, that's what I was oh, trying. Yeah. That, that makes sense to me, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a that's very important point. Yeah. So I missed that. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's thank you for clarifying that. that yeah. mm -hmm. um, another question is like, I think if I understand you right, you're, you're thinking of your method isn't paying attention necessarily to which which of these variables might be a response variable that we're trying to predict and which are the explanatory variables that we can use to predict that response. Is that right? They're just all sort of treated. Uh, you're looking at the joint distribution of all the variables that might include what I might think of as one of them as a response variable and the others as explanatory variables. Is that right? So, yeah, thank you so much, Dan, for that point. So, yeah, that's the thing I want to emphasize this uh, study because, um, as you see here, uh, this method is only for data curing or imputation. It has nothing to do with uh, prediction because Prediction should be done by other statistical method or machine learning method. So uh, the idea of our method is that given the data set having missingness or ha having hole there, we want to cure that without any knowledge about the prediction, predictor, or you know, discrete, the target variable. We, we don't know about that. Actually, we don't require that information. So, so we, what we need only the data set, original, incomplete data set. I think that's the key, uh, key thing we want to emphasize here, yeah. That's great, thank you. Yeah, yeah there's, some, there's some interesting problems that others have thought about, like, um, like for instance, if you use a, a random forest predictor, there are techniques for finding what are the important variables behind the successful prediction of a response. And there's lots of different uh, imputation techniques proposed in the random forest context. Mm -hmm. Then when sometimes people use those techniques and then they, then they turn to these variable importance measures mm -hmm. and those can be very deceptive depending on you know, how they imputed. And so anyway, it would be, there's all sorts of other questions that you could study downstream from this, but yes, yes. I understand your focus here is on completing, your, you know, dealing with an, a data set where there's incompleteness and figuring out how to, to correct yes. it. Yeah, I think that's a that's great point because um, I think there is a tar domain specific question or domain spe the machine learning based imputation or machine learning oriented imputation. That I think that's a great approaches, and even you know DNA researchers using their own imputation methods such as Bayesian approaches, so that will perform very well for that specific area. I agree with that, but. The goal here, our goal here is that what if the, you know, so engineering researcher who has no strong expertise in statistics, then how they can simply use this uh, program to cure their data. So 
the gen generality and applicability is kind of main one of main goal of our research. So yeah, I totally agree with your idea. Yeah. Hello, this is Li Zhi. I have a question. Yes, yes. Okay, so following Dan's question, so so can you confirm that you are only using the explanatory, explanatory variable and not using response variable at all? No, we use all of them. As long as it is on the data set, we use all of them as it is. We don't, yeah, we don't distinguish predictor or target. We don't distinguish like that. Yeah. That's, I see. Yeah, Thank that's you. Point. Yeah. Other questions? Yes, yes. So the, the SIS method is just a, basically the linear model, right? Screening with a linear model. Yes, that's a uh, that's very good uh, limit a point you mentioned that. Yeah, so SIS for now is a linear model, as you, as you see here. Yeah, that's kind of a limitation of our current version. Yeah, you're right. So I'm just wondering how, how well it does with the categorical variables that uh, Yes, yes. If, uh, if some of these X are, are truly categorical, you have to send them into uh, indicator functions or something? So yeah, for that, that's why I mentioned in the ongoing research topic. So what if we have a um, hugely categorical data? So not the continuous data, then our program may need another theory. So that's why you know, we, our group and Jagong Kim's group are working on the theory, theoretical part. Yeah, we are working on it. Mm -hmm. Maybe for that, uh, Professor Kim, can you can you answer that question? Because I, <laughs> you are, you can. yes, uh, we are going on several. Uh, I'm, I'm working on several directions currently, and one of them is uses some sort of graphical model, uh, graphical model tools to identify some structure among high dimensional categorical data to come up with some uh, something uh, reasonable. So that's one direction, and uh, like Dan said, uh, some tree-based or random policy techniques can be actually implemented. So there's nothing, you know, that we, we, we don't particularly uh, reluctant to consider. I mean, we are open to, <laughs> we are open to uh, whatever the techniques are available to, to implement, to improve our, uh, our uh, method. And, but the point is that uh, it's more general purpose so that the user with the limited knowledge in statistics can can use it, and and then hopefully they can come up with some better uh, analysis out of that. So that's the bottom line. <laughs> that's great. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Well, let's uh, let's thank our speaker. Thank you very much, uh, Inho, for for giving this talk. I really enjoyed it, and um, we've got this recorded for others to see who couldn't be here. And um, and and thanks to all for attending. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you.